Those of you who have not been here before, so we are newcomers to the community. We've been here since 1817, <laughs> and we've been in this building for 200 years this year. We moved in July of 1823. Uh, this is our um, the second year of our lecture series celebrating Portsmouth's 400th, and um, we are very glad that we have a good turnout, the second good turnout in a row. Uh, I'd like to let you know that we've got some excellent programs coming up. We have Handel and Haydn Society coming up a week from tomorrow at St. John's Church, and we have the next lecture in this series is going to be May 17th with Ann Beatty talking about an abundance of cod. So I'd like to thank our program committee who have been working extra hard to get everything ready for you today. So hopefully <laughs> nothing will fail us. Uh, I certainly know our presenter won't fail us. <laughs> Sam Reed has been the president of the Wood Island Life Saving Station Association Hold up. since it was founded. I don't know when it was founded. 2011. 2011. He's been an Athenian proprietor for 38 years now. I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Graduated from both Trinity College and Tufts in urban environmental policy. Yes, true enough. He's worked in Washington, D.C. Yes. He's worked for three governors, President Bush. Yes. He's worked on other historic projects, including the gargantuan Masonic Temple restoration in Providence which if you haven't seen it, it's spectacular. And they also have a very lovely Athenian in Providence if you would like to visit. Uh, so Sam was gonna talk about his most recent project, mm -hmm. very nearly completed and ready to go, Wood Island Life Saving Station. So please take it away, Sam. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Well, it's wonderful to be here. Can everybody hear me over that? Yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's get along with it. That is an image of Wood Island Life Saving Station. We'll come back to this by the end. So just take a look because you're about to learn a good deal about that. Whoever's ringing the phone wins the prize. Uh, that's just a lovely image. My name is Sam Reed. I am the board president, as Tom kindly uh, mentioned. I love historic preservation. I love boats. Um, there's another organization that people who are interested in this subject, there's a national organization of life saving station people. So take note, it's called the U.S. Life Saving Service Heritage Association. Um, Athenaeum proprietor, I think 39 years, but uh, there you go. And thanks to the board, thanks to Tom and the staff for having me. Uh, here we go. I'm going to try to quickly give you uh, the overview of this project. We're trying to turn this into a maritime museum. That's, that's the point. And to leave you with one big message, brave men rowing out in small boats to save others. So we'll get there, we'll get you. We'll, we'll come all the way back to that. That is a small boat with brave men rowing out to save others. That is how the Coast Guard does it today. Uh, that's a nasty little storm, but look at that. That's the 47 footer coming out of Station Portsmouth Harbor, the current Coast Guard station. And the Life Saving Service itself was you know, pre-Coast Guard. Its mission was search and rescue. Uh, it was founded 1871-ish. There was a bunch of discussion about that point. Sumner Kimball ran it for its entire life. He was from Southern Maine. Kind of interesting. Um, it was within the U.S. Department of Treasury, and that's because uh, Revenue Cutter Service, founded in 1790, was the idea of Mr. Alexander Hamilton, of the Secretary of Treasury. Treasury. Well done. So Life Saving Service, Treasury, they got together and formed the U.S. Coast Guard in 1915. The Coast Guard always says their birth year is 1790, which is sort of true, but we'll, we'll give it to them. Uh, you all know this area very well. We're sort of sitting in here somewhere. Uh, you got Maine, you got New Hampshire, and there have been three, don't ask me why it's blocked on top, three stations on the Piscataqua over time. The first one, Jerry's Point in Newcastle, uh, the second one is what we'll be discussing, Wood Island. And the third one is the current day station back in Newcastle. Interestingly, all three, when they were active duty stations, were called 
station Portsmouth Harbor. So I think that's noteworthy. We're going to talk about Wood Island, but when it was an active duty, it was called Station Portsmouth Harbor. And here is Jerry's Point. Here is Wood Island. And here is the current station. Mm -hmm. Fort Point is also called that, that piece of land. Uh, that's Jerry's Point. It's You can't read it, but it's a bib number two. And the, the Life Saving Service would hire in different architects, and they design 10, 20 buildings, and then they'd fire the architect, which, of course, is a time-honored tradition. They would get a new architect. He would have a new design. They'd build 20 of those, and then they'd fire the architect. This is Albert Bibb. He survived a couple different designs, but that beautiful building is no longer, and it was uh, pushed out of Newcastle by the U.S. Army. They wanted to take that piece of land and start putting in guns to protect the Navy Yard. Here are some old boys from Jerry's Point. There they are on patrol. You will recognize that building there. That is Wentworth by the Sea. This is a postcard. Don't you love postcards? The greatest. This is the first picture ever taken of Wood Island Station. It's from January of uh, 1909. And you'll notice the photographer was George Lawson. And the Athenaeum just hosted a, a lovely exhibit of Lawson's work. He was uh, an artist. He was also a novelist. He was also a photographer. Uh, that ramp is about to come into conversation. Be ready for that. There are only nine stations still existing from the Life Saving Service in the state of Maine. Uh, there were 12. There are 65, depending on how you count them, lighthouses. Uh, so my point being, lighthouses, dime a dozen. Life-saving stations, very special, very rare. Of the nine, three are on the National Register. Wood Island will be on the register. It is currently eligible, so making it even more fantastic. Um, only one of the nine is open to the public. It's a bed and breakfast, so none are museums. There are very, very few life-saving stations open as museums historically restored in the United States. We think about a dozen. So Wood Island's in rare company. Wood Island itself is called a Duluth type. So the first one was Duluth, Minnesota, 1888. There were 28 of them built. There are 12 remaining. There's only one that is historically restored. It's in Cape Cod in Provincetown. So Wood Island will be the second historically restored Duluth type. It opened in 1908. Many rescues, many lives, but if you're going to get one thing right, it is not a lighthouse. Everyone gets that wrong. Oh, how's that lighthouse project going? It's not a lighthouse. That is a lighthouse. You all know that building well? Yes, you do. That is whale back, uh, just at the entrance of the Piscataqua. Fantastic. And this is kind of fun. Um, there is a live streaming video camera on the tower at Wood Island. It is free. Go take a look. It's on our webpage. It is also on YouTube. And if there's ever a storm, it's a blast to watch. So I took this picture with a screenshot from our live video. Wow. Notice the 47 footer in the background. So I had a, a cell phone number of the commanding officer of Station Portsmouth Harbor, and I texted him and I said, Holy smoke, one of your 47 footers is out in that terrible storm. And he said, Sam, I cannot talk right now. I am driving. <laughs> Here is the current day station. Uh, there's the boathouse where the big boats live. That's the actual station. That is their marine safety. And you all know. Um, uh, it's it's Portsmouth Harbor Light is really, there are a couple different names, uh, but that's what it's called. Uh, there are the 47 footers sitting in that lovely, lovely boathouse. Uh, I'm not sure what architectural type this is. I think it's sort of, you know, early aircraft control tower. I'm not sure. Uh, in New Hampshire, there were five stations. Uh, four of them are gone, so only one left. Not open to the public. It's a private home, no museums. Uh, there it is. And that's down in Rye. And notice, obviously, oh, uh, no, I the main this is called an 1874 type. Uh, since I mentioned the Life Saving Service was started right around 1871-ish, these are literally the first ones ever made. So they're very, very few. They're very special. They're very rare. And this one's had a few little funny changes made to it. Um, you'll see that's a historical picture. Uh, there's another one up in Biddeford, and I visited it yesterday. It is a private home. It was really cool. Um, so in New Hampshire, uh, here's the list. As you can see, demolished, demolished, demolished. When I stand before a, a group of, of Portsmouth Athenaeum, I always think of research, and I always think of you all and how perhaps you could help and look for interesting things in this project. This one right here, 
Um, we don't know when the Rye Beach Station was demolished. So if anybody wants to dive into that, I'm sure it's not hard to figure out. But that these stations um, are, are pretty much um, uh, a, a tragedy, the, the fact that they're all gone. Um, here is a wonderful photo of a bunch of the surfmen. They're sitting on snow and ice. I love that. And they're sitting out in front of Wallace Sand Station. Uh, I mentioned the name Ben Ricker. We're going to come back to that a few times. We think that's Ben Ricker right there. Uh, there it is, Wallace Sands, absolutely beautiful. Look at the boat. Uh, here we got uh, Wallace Sands again in the background, beautiful boat. And here the gentlemen are from Rye Beach. Again, I mentioned Ben Ricker. We think that's Ben right there in the white pants. So that's pretty cool. Um, don't you want one of these sweaters that says Wood Island on it? I really, really I think we should work on that. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a great image. You all have been to the Atlantic Grill. So these images are Michael Labrie has these and he has blown them up and they're hanging at the Atlantic Grill. So this is also um, uh, Rye Beach. And this is the station that is no longer in, in, in place in Hampton Beach. And it is a, a, it's called the Jersey Pattern. The architectural type is called Jersey Pattern. There are many of them on the Jersey coast. And uh, there's some uh, rowers from the Jersey uh, Pattern station at Hampton. This is, this is sort of the enemy. It's always nice to have an enemy. Uh, that is a tombstone, really. And it says, dedicated the former site of the Coast Guard Station. So this is what we don't want to have happen to Wood Island Station. That is your vision. Uh, imagine what crazy people would say. Gundalo landing at Wood Island. Heritage is another beautiful boat, if you don't know. That's a marine railway with a boat on it. Shed, seawalls, flag on the floor. This is fantastic. I bring to your attention, this was created by an artist for our charity in 2013. So we started, uh, and I'm going to tell you the story, but we started just around that time. So this took some pretty crazy vision to come up with, you know, we're going to have tourists arriving here. Uh, ooh, that's because that's where we started. Roof collapsing. No windows. This is 2016. This is just to make you feel better. 2016, 17, 18. Getting better. Okay, you're back. Okay, it's not it's not all lost. Here we have uh, a, one of our very few historical photos. And uh, if it is that you happen to know of any photos of Wood Island, please do not assume that we have them high dedicated. We do not necessarily know what you have. So there are people in this area especially this kind of group who keep scrapbooks and you keep your grandparents scrapbooks. I certainly do. And you have these things as you look through them. Just remember, we don't necessarily know much of anything about images of Wood Island. We have no interior shots. We have precious few, maybe three or four exterior shots. So this we'll use a couple times. There's that marine railway I mentioned. It is used to put boats in the building. The boat was sort of a big, a big boathouse, big boat barn. And that's how the boats got in the water. Crazy. Imagine that. Uh, this is also one of our very few historic shots. There's a funny little thing right on the far right. For you and Zoom, I don't know if you can see my corner. I doubt you can. There's a, a, a little white, funny telephone pole thing on the right. We're going to talk about that. You can see whale back. Again, the Marine Railway. That little boat becomes interesting in a minute. This is a Jonesport uh, 38. It's a lobster boat, and it got transformed over to become a life-saving boat. So if anyone's curious to know what I'd like for Christmas, this would really do the trick right there. Um, when we put a mooring out at Wood Island, uh, we put the mooring in the same spot as this historic shot. Um, so many years of neglect, again, used for life-saving, 08 to 41. In World War II, the U.S. Navy showed up. And they kicked out the Coast Guard. Remember, the Army kicked out the Coast Guard from Newcastle the first time. Now it's the Navy kicking them out. And they wanted to take over Wood Island Station to watch for Nazi subs. And if you don't know, there was an unbelievably, extraordinarily complicated uh, defense of the entrance of the river. And it's certainly worthy of a whole other lecture some other day. But nets, mines, sonar, incredible, with Wood Island right in the middle of it. So Wood Island's history is kind of neat. Life-saving, then the Navy shows up. And after World War II, everybody had been in Newcastle. They're like, do we really have to go back to this island? 
let's let's deactivate and, and move back over to, to the mainland. So that happened. Kittery became the owner in 1973. Federal government gave it to Kittery for free. Very little maintenance. And it, it wasn't a good marriage. They weren't really good stewards. And so, you know, it fell apart. That is a building looking pretty sad. That is not good. Oh, that's way better. Uh, that's Angus King's staffers on the beach. That's always good. Um, that is not good. That is multi inches of toxic bird guano on the floor. That is extremely dangerous stuff because there are no windows. Uh, lead paint, just really bad. Asbestos everywhere. That's better. That's really nice. So that's that's what it looks like right this morning. So yesterday I met with the finished flooring person. That is subflooring. We're about to talk through the, the finished floor. Ooh, that's not good. That's better. That's really not good. That is Aaron Sturgis, who is a very well-regarded historic preservationist in our area. He has really led most of the detailed work in the building. But that's a hole. I mean, that is a full-on hole in the building. That's better. That is Aaron last fall. So that's really nice. And the basement was spectacularly bad. That is a asbestos falling, really nasty stuff. That's better. So you get the idea. It's it's come a long way. We are, as I mentioned, uh, Wilsa, a, a 501c3. And let me tell you sort of why we came to be. In 2009, Kittery, who owns the building and owns the island, started talking about demolition. So that was not okay. And a group of us got together and started asking a lot of questions. Now, it's nothing's more fun in my book than fighting City Hall, but this was rugged. This went on and on and on, and I'm sure you all uh, saw some of that in the papers and, and have, have experienced this one. Um, Kittery did come along with a request for proposals. They asked formally for help from charities, and we responded. Um, they really weren't very happy that we responded, so it was a very uphill battle. We eventually got to... Um, you know, protests, lawyers, petitions, uh, unpleasant stuff. Let's just, shall we skip over that part? Let's just skip over that part. The, the 2013, we created, in essence, a compromise. And they said, we cannot figure out using the building. So we will not allow any use. If you'd like to restore the exterior only, you can begin. And we took the deal because we knew we weren't really going to do that. We were going to start raise money, do the permits to figure out if this was really even possible. And if it was possible, we'd come back, which took us a couple of years. So 2016, we come back and we say we've raised three quarters of a million. We figured out the permitting. We figured out the engineering. We're ready to go. But we must have a contract to allow full restoration, exterior, interior. And we want to use the building. So we want it open for the public as a maritime museum. And they finally said yes. We have a 40-year contract once we pull a certificate of occupancy. So we haven't done that yet. So it should that should be next spring. Um, there's 2016. Really, truly took the building apart. That's an all-new roof. 2017, let's do the exterior. It's looking pretty good, I must say. Ooh, that's looking quite lovely. Now, this is... When you come to a, a little lecture on the restoration of Wood Island Life Saving Station, you assume we're talking about the restoration of the building. That is true, we are. But we're also concerned about these seawalls. We need a pier if we're gonna get anybody out there. What about that marine railway we've been bragging about? What are we, what are we talking about here, people? So the front lawn was missing. I mean, I'm talking about an eighth of the island wasn't there. The tide came through twice a day because the seawall had failed. That is very close to the building. I'm telling you 20 feet. So big, scary storms, there's water flopping against the building. So this is, this is mandatory to fix this. 2018, let's take on this, um, this north seawall. Massive, massive thing. As long as a football field, I don't know, 14 feet tall, 4 feet thick. Massive. We, we built it with a concrete base and precast concrete blocks. Lots and lots of them. Uh, 257 short, a lot. And we also brought in all of this material to fill that hole in the front lawn, uh, rebuilt the shed, did a whole bunch of things. How the heck did we do all that? We made friends. 
So you can't see them because they're in camouflage. No, I'm only kidding. That is uh, the main army National Guard. So literally the army came as uh, part of their, that's called their innovative readiness training, their annual training. So we taught the army into using Wood Island as their annual training. So we got ridiculous. Uh, two platoons of 60 men and women, 120 soldiers for 30 straight days, seven days a week, the entire month of June, 2018, living in tents in Fort Foster, you can get a lot done with 120 soldiers. And they brought a lot of expertise, a lot of toys, incredible amount of equipment, and just went nuts. This, this picture, I do sometimes wake up at night with nightmares on this one. That is me standing there. The seawall's gone. So the army hasn't arrived yet. They're gonna come in the next couple of days. So we took out what was left of the North Seawall. So we are fully committed. Problem is, we don't really know if this is going to work. We have a pretty good idea, but the National Guard certainly never done this. We can't, we've never moved equipment on the island like this. So gee whizzes, I hope this works. Uh, and it did. So they came and built these massive forms. They filled the forms with crazy amounts of concrete, uh, put the blocks on top of that. Uh, just amazing, amazing project. To do this in 30 days is wild. That's how we did it. Uh, we chartered this out of uh, Casco Bay, Peaks Island, and it's a wonderful custom-made boat. It's just ideal for this sort of thing. That is a concrete truck. Those are army trucks. Uh, come to find out they can take two concrete trucks at once on this thing. And put this in the category of things you did not know you'd ever actually learn or need to know. If you ever find yourself with a barge with two concrete trucks on it, Make sure you have the barrels spinning in opposite directions. <laughs> Just to put that on the table. Oh my. Anyway, uh, there you go. This is just a sampling. I mean, they ran these trucks hard for, for weeks and they brought in all these blocks, brought in all this earth. So it was an extraordinary military operation. A lot of fun uh, to see it happen. That is 30 days later. That's nuts. And it really, I mean, I'm not joking, the, the sense of accomplishment, the, the feeling of, you know, the strength of our country is extraordinary. Those are the two sergeants that ran it. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty laid back. But let me tell you, they were nervous. Halfway through this, it looked really like touch and go a couple times. Um, so we got that all built. It's all lovely. And you know it's good when the National Guard brings out their battle flag. So they're, they're, they're showing off there. Um, notice there's a big piece of wood in the middle of this wall. Why in the world would you do that? Well, it's because we're going to take that wood out and put that marine railway in there. Um, that's the marine railway I'm referring to. And this is uh, a before, uh, just to remind you, it's it was bad. And that's a during. And that's pretty good. And that's really good. So it, it really, the north wall was a tour de force. Uh, okay, 2019, let's build the south wall. I mean, it's in worse shape. We got to do it's a little bit smaller. We're feeling extra cocky because we just knocked out the North Wall in 30 days. The National Guard has this bright idea. Let's build the South Wall in 21 days. I'm like, that is a horrible idea. But they did it. So there you go. They also built this fun pole, ADA ramping, a bunch of site work. So a lot of other things. And uh, who here in this picture does not have a hard hat on? <laughs> that, that guy right there, yeah. Um, Here's the south wall, not looking good. Uh, soldiers are coming, more forms, more blocks, ridiculous stuff. This is this wreck pole I'm talking about. So it sure, it's a flagpole, but it also has a crow's nest in it. It has a ladder. What is all that about? This, uh, I happen to know, is June 21st, 2019, because it was a wild day. One, two, three concrete trucks on the island at once. Not a very big island. I think it's a little excavator, some sort of man lift, uh, the barge. So really a wild moment. Um, but it all it all worked. This is called a Lyle gun. And and how many people here know what this thing is? Do you all somewhat? Yeah, a couple people know what it is. Um, so the idea is if you get to the wreck in your rowing boat, remember the one big message, brave man rowing out boats to save others. You get there and you're going to die. I mean, it's too rough. It's too horrible. Not going to work. So plan B is get to shore as close as you can and pull out your trusty Lyle gun, which is sitting in your boat. It has a projectile tied to line. You shoot the projectile into the rigging of the ship. 
like that. And that is 1886 down in Cape Cod. And you see that little weird thing right there? That is a person. So they have shot the projectile with the line. They've tied it off. And that person is being saved because the boat can't land there. That's pretty nuts. And there's another one. And there's another one. And to do this, you can't just go to a wreck and, and magically know how to do this rescue. You have to practice it. So this image is from Rye, New Hampshire. And you see this funny little pole? They shot the cannon at their little pole. And then they tied it off and slid down. So that crazy thing we built at Wood Island is designed for that. And we will take our cannon. We don't have it yet, but we're working on that. And we're going to shoot the projectile in line at our pole, tie it all off, slide to the ground. There are only three places in the U.S. that still do this. So we're really excited that we're on the path for that. Um, I'm sure you all know Lifeline by Winslow Homer. And I, I throw that in. This is a, um, a study, a sketch before the painting. I just love this. I went down to the Metropolitan this spring to, to see the Winslow Homer exhibit. Um, that's fantastic. Okay. Um, pandemic summer of 2020, our fifth phase. Let's get the pier going. Let's get the Marine Railway. The pier is all new. It is not historic, but it is designed for Gungalow heritage, et cetera. I mean, literally, we sat with them and their boards and talked that through. Um, the Marine Railway is really historically accurate, so we're really happy about that. Again, back to that image. Remember the Marine Railway? That's the computer image. We have a really nifty thing on our webpage, go play with it, which is interactive. So you can move up, down, left, right, around and around. And there's a pier next to it. This is a very large structure. The Marine Railway is over 200 feet long. It drops 20 feet in elevation. The pier is even bigger than that. The gangway, let me tell you, uh, 80 feet long, aluminum. Uh, we have a lot of federal money into this project, so it's all handicapped accessible which is really, really special. Um, that is my good friend, Fred Hart from Petrol Cove Marine. Uh, that crazy thing he's got in his hand is a diamond trip drill. And the diamond tip drill can go through anything. He drilled holes in the ledge of the rock in front of Wood Island. You see these funny little, we call them pins. They're six inch structural steel pipes. What you see sticking out, the similar amount is down in the rock. So those all go in. It took Fred about two and a half days to drill each one. So this is a long project. They're getting good. And then 12 inch pipe, also structural steel. Uh, we bought this used from a, a fracking operation in West Virginia. We were very happy with ourselves. But that pipe is really strong, it's structural steel. And it's on top of those little pins with the whole thing filled with concrete. So this, this pier is very substantial. For the record, it's a very bad place for a pier. <laughs> this is not okay. We have tremendously bad weather there, really, really tough conditions. But we go ahead and we build this thing out. We tie it all together. That's a person up there painting it. That's the end. And we're feeling pretty good about ourselves by the time we get to uh, 2021. Here is time to complete the pier, complete the marine railway. Believe it or not, um, the, the train track that we use is, is extra special. I'll talk about that. Here it comes, a lot of decking. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, it's looking good. Ooh, handrails. Here comes the float. Um, Port of New Hampshire, you know, over by the salt piles has a big warehouse. They were very kind. They donated use so we could build all this stuff there. Well, once you build the, the float and the pier, uh, the gangway, you got to pick it up. That's our project manager, Bert Ricky, And he is talking these nice men into letting us use their uh, little team train. And we picked up the float and the gangway and put it in work. Uh, and that is pretty cool picture with, let's go put it all together. Let's see if it works. And it was fantastic. It worked great. Um, my father-in-law was visiting when this happened. And you know, father-in-laws love their son-in-laws, but you know, it's a son-in-law. Anyway, I actually went up a few notches in the, in the roster that day. He was there for this. So he was like, Wow, you know, this is actually pretty cool. I'm like, I'm telling you. So here we go. There's um, there's our marine engineer, and that's our project manager, and they are happily on the end of the thing. It's just great. So here it comes, looking pretty good. Um, our friends of the National Guard came back in 2021, and they were smaller in number, shorter duration, but they were fired up, and they did a lot of carpentry work. Again, no hard hat. 
Um, but really good stuff. They they started building all this decking for us so that folks in wheelchairs and all can get. There's going to be um, a little handicapped bathroom in there. We've also got a little generator in there. So love that picture. I mean, they're on the float. How fabulous is that? Um, Peter Driscoll, are you here? You're, you are right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is a before and after. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, here it comes. So you're getting the idea. It's all connected. So not only does the pier make it to the island, but it also connects from the seawall back into the building. So it's pretty cool. And here comes uh, more board, beautiful pictures, more computer images, just amazing stuff. Um, the uh, research back to being at the Athenaeum, looking for original materials. Uh, this we really worked hard to get. Uh, it is the original plan for the Marine Railway at Wood Island. It is 1907, I'm sure you can't read it, but it's 1907's original plan. So we, thank goodness, hadn't finished permitting this thing when we got our hands on this. So we were able to fiddle with the design a little bit more. So it's really, really, really close to what was there. Here it comes. It's pretty amazing. Just getting that wood is no joke. And the train track itself, um, we really, really, really wanted to have the exact correct track. So uh, we looked and looked all over New England. It's a very special, very old track because we knew what it was because there were remnants on the island. We looked everywhere, we couldn't find it. Well, come to find out, there was a pile of it in Kittery. So you know where Carl's and uh, Golden Harvest and that's Route 1, Route 103. So in uh, the beginning of World War II, the Navy Yard pulled up all their track knowing that they were about to bump up their production a lot. And they put in heavier gauge tracks. So they took the old track and just left it on the side. So it sat there for 75 years. Literally no one cared about it. So we cared a lot about it. It was the exact track we were looking for. And what's more, sort of historically speaking, that's the track that serviced the Navy Yard from the late 1800s to 1940 something. So it's already had some ridiculous amount of maritime history. So we're really fired up that we, we got it. Uh, Pan Am Railways owned it and they were very kind and, and donated it to us. So that was really, really helpful. Um, here we go. This was last summer. Let's get into the interiors. The, the trim is ridiculous. Um, we also restored this amazing boat called the Mervyn Roberts, and we're really thinking a lot about a museum. The trim, if you start to get the bug of historic preservation, in 2016, when we took the building apart, we kept all the trim. So I'm talking about lots of it was rotten, lots of it was useless. But what we could, we saved and we numbered it by room, by location. Got that? We stored it for seven, whoopsie, we stored it for seven years. We then cleaned it of all of its lead paint. We brought it all back to the same spot where it used to be, put it all back. Whatever was missing, we replicated. Uh, we have 21 different profiles in the building. So very, very, very cool. Okay, a little crazy, I must say. Um, and it was one of these sort of examples of taking a very long view of this. I mean, you don't you don't take all the trim and hold it for seven years <laughs> unless you're taking a long view. This is a nifty thing. Um, that is a wall by wall plan showing red, we have lost the trim, green, we got it. So we got to replicate all of these pieces and somewhere in this pile, we have all these pieces. We just got to go put it back in the right spot. So this went on and on room by room. Uh, that is a historic piece. That is a brand new piece. They are exact. Um, oh, and obviously using all the same woods. Here comes a whole bunch of historic trim coming back to the building. And this will give you a sense. This room, um, this is before it was plastered. That is crown molding. Uh, that is chair rail. That is door frame, plinth. Funny little decorative thing. I don't know what that is. Baseboard. And you can see that darker wood is historic. That is brand new. So this is really, really, really special. Um, Maritime Museum. So obviously educating the public, celebrating the history, telling the story. It will be available for events. The Wood Island Life Saving Station. So I can just see the Portsmouth Athenaeum love and life out there. At the minimum, the board meeting. I mean, come on. Um, overnight stays. Did, did you just say overnight stays? We can spend the night there. 
So that's an extraordinary thing. Believe me when I tell you, we have not figured out the rules of the game there, but um, it's going to be a very special offer. Um, we've begun to collecting artifacts. And again, I was giving the pitch earlier about anything you may have Wood Island wise. This is a really nifty story, I'll make it short. Um, a man named John Connors appeared because he had read an article in the Portsmouth Herald. We hired a consultant to help us lay out the museum. So room by room, where exhibits would go, the flow of traffic through the rooms, how it's all gonna work. And she started to do some heavy digging into newspapers.com. Have you ever played with that? It's fantastic. So she starts finding some nifty stories. Uh, one of the stories, there was a terrible tragedy on May 10th, uh, 1920, where a man drowned. And he was, uh, they tried to save him from Wood Island. The man who drowned was the son-in-law of the keeper, the son-in-law of the headman. So he goes out to do this rescue and there's his daughter's husband. And obviously that's a tragedy. I tell this to the reporter, D. Allen Kerr. I hope Dee's here or on Zoom. Hi, Dee, if you're on. Um, and Dee is an extraordinary writer, huge friend of this project and a new uh, member here. Um, D writes the article, John Connors reads it and gets in touch immediately and says, the man that drowned was my grandfather. The man that did the rescue was my great grandfather. Mm -hmm. What's more, our family has been collecting materials about Wood Island for a hundred years. We have an extensive collection, photographs, documents, incredible things. We would like to donate all of it to the museum. Mm -hmm. So this image comes from that collection. Mm -hmm. And it's nifty because that is Fort Foster. Sadly, Wood Island is not in the picture. What's weird about this is, first of all, they're standing, but um, there are no warlocks and no wars. So it makes you think there's an engine in that boat, which is really, really cool because it does have a date on the back of it. So that's telling you this transition from boats with no engines to boats with engines is a very big moment. It's a, a milestone in all of this because pretty soon the boats get bigger and the engines get bigger. And pretty soon you don't need life-saving stations anymore. And by the way, that marine railway is not needed because the boats are so big you can't fit anywhere. So this is a, a transition, a historically interesting picture. This is a man named Charles Hand. He was the one that did the rescue. He was the great grandfather of John Connors. There is Charles. And I mean, I'm telling you, these documents are fantastic. Uh, that is the actual uh, appointment document for Charles Hand to become the keeper of Wood Island in, in uh, 1918. And I mean, good stuff. This is the original, we are thrilled. We also have his uh, wedding certificate. And that's crazy cool because he's here at St. John's, right down the street. The uh, minister is uh, Henry Hubby. Henry Hubby's uh, wife is the witness and her sister is the other witness. So it's uh, 1896, September 19. Here is the minister's family. So there's the minister, that's his wife, daughter, son. You know, the fountain in the middle of um, Prescott Park is a memorial to uh, the minister's son, uh, Charles Emerson, how he died in, in action, US Navy. See this little girl sitting on her dad's lap? That's my grandmother. Yeah, so this is craziness. And in this context, for me, Wood Island continues to be a real thread that has, has really uh, navigated through way beyond uh, restoring a building, telling stories. We're now uh, bringing together these Seacoast families, and there, there's a bunch of it happening. And so I was just tickled pink that uh, we found a, I mean, who's got the wedding certificate of their great grandparents? I mean, that's, well, okay, this crowd does. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very strange wheel, too. I also had earlier mentioned, uh, uh, ben Ricker. So Ben's right there. Ben served at Wallace Sands, Jerry's Point, Rod Beach, and Wood Island. He, he is, uh, you know, a journey. And he was uh, also a, a family that is still here. So this is Ben Ricker holding Ben Ricker's picture. He's over in Newcastle. He's been a lobsterman for his whole career. Um, there used to be a, a seafood place in, in um, at Newcastle, uh, Ricker's. So the point being, he's got a lot of goodies. He's uh, got a, a bunch of artifacts. I'm, I'm also uh, become friendly with his nephew, a man named Chris Ward, who has uh, been a great, great friend of the project. But you're talking Ben Ricker's son-in-law was Clifford Tabbitt. What is going on with these uh, old, old Coast Guard guys, uh, life-saving guys, daughters marrying other Coast Guard guys? That seems like a problem. But anyway, he also, uh, again, Ben Ricker's son-in-law, uh, Chris Ward's grandfather, 
So Chris Ward's grandfather and great-grandfather both served at Wood Island. So you're seeing this theme. This family has this exact uniform. They have oars, they have documents, they have photos. So our museum is, is quietly, happily growing nicely. So can we open this thing? Can we finish the project in 24, in 23, open in 24, finish floor stairs? We're getting there. We're really close. Um, let me throw a bigger idea out. We finish the project, we open the museum. That's really cool. But there's more. And I, you can't read it. I don't know what this annoying thing is, but it says helping others then and now. So we've really been working very closely with a number of charities. So it's odd that someone who's running a charity is telling you that this charity is helping other charities, but that's what we've been doing. And primarily we've been donating, uh, Sam Reed will take you around Wood Island to these various charitable auctions and they sell them off and they keep the money and we get to meet their donors, which is fun. But the point being, we're helping other charities. On August 6th, we hosted a full fireworks show, professional show. Coast Guard birthday, August 4th, close enough, uh, 1790, Alexander Hamilton. But we're talking about Great Island Common in Newcastle was open to the public. We did a little social media. We asked everyone to bring non-perishable food. So yes, it's always fun to have a fireworks show, but we were helping the food pantry in Portsmouth. Same thing in Kittery, State of Maine, open uh, Fort McClary. We had hundreds of people there, over a thousand people at Great Island Common. So we're really, you know, excited about this direction for Wood Island. There's a really wonderful example at the local high school. I'm going to tell you about. There's the there's the fireworks. There's a we fill this truck up a couple of times with with uh, food. So that's not normal. Wonderful. It, Trape Academy is the high school in Kittery, and we had a funder show up and say, "We love your project. Keep up the good work." But we don't we don't do what you're talking about. We don't do bricks and mortar. We do children's education. What do you have for children's education? We said we have, we're kind of busy with our friends, the National Guard, et cetera. Um, we don't have any children's education. And the answer was Sam. Wrong answer. Checkbooks open. Come on, what do you got? I had been chatting with Trape Academy, um, uh, hypothetically, futuristically, but I came back and I said, I, I think we have a real opportunity here. And they said, great. And we had been batting around the idea of a wooden boat building class. And so we felt ready to roll. We reached out to Lowell's Boat Shop. Have you all been to Lowell's down in Amesbury? Mm -hmm. It is well worth the trip. Oldest wooden boat building shop in America. It is 20 minutes from here. It's incredible. The head guy had done a bunch of education for high schoolers. So we just hired him. And he came up to Kittery. It's now been over two years. Over 60 kids have gone through the program. What's really fun, back to research, back to digging in the old archives, we got to pick the boat. So this boat is one of a kind, doesn't exist. Uh, it was built by Lowell's. It was built by Lowell's for life-saving stations in our area. So this very boat, we don't really know exactly that it was Wood Island, but I showed you one of those historical pictures and the little boat looks a lot like it. So this is just a gorgeous piece of machinery here. Trapes, absolutely spectacular space. That is Graham McKay, who runs Lowell's. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that's really fun. Coming along, kids learning. Uh, connection with younger people to Wood Island is, is money in the bank. And they're now building a second one. So there's number one. There's number two just starting. It is almost done. If you'd like, we'll gladly send you an invitation to come see the launch. We dedicated this one in uh, last spring, there it is launching. We named her Perseverance, quite fitting. Uh, the second boat will be named Grace, also quite lovely. So there it is, 19 footer, six or three man boat. That was just the warm up. Mervyn Roberts is the, is the main, main show here. Uh, really rare boat. Uh, if you have a moment on our webpage, there's a nifty video called The Acquisition of the Mervyn Roberts. And it's well worth, if you're having any trouble sleeping, you know, that will help. But it's a really good movie. It tells the story of how we found the boat, how rare it is, who Mervyn Roberts was, all kinds of good stuff. It's a Type SR. It's from the 1930s. Uh, we think it's the only one remaining on the planet Earth that can go in the water. 26 foot, eight oared, 
Uh, we also tucked in a fully electric engine, which is really special because how many times are we really going to get eight people in a coxswain together? That's a picture from 1997. Notice a great big engine cover in the middle. It had an inboard diesel. That's a no-no if you want to row the thing because you can't get any seats there. So we had to take that out. You remember our friends Pan Am who gave us the track? We sent it to Pan Am because we needed help building a really special cradle for it. And I'm going to show you that. Nate Greeley is the man that led the restoration. He is walking on water, in my view. Incredible, incredible guy. Um, he told me uh, to come to his shop. And I show up, and I'm a little shocked to see the keel of the boat. I mean, yes, we're going to have a big old restoration of the Northern Roberts. I did not understand we were taking the keel out before I saw it. Well, he's trying to placate my concerns by showing me a brand new keel right next to so he, it's a piece of sculpture. It's absolutely gorgeous. He is proud as a peacock. I can't get too upset. He says, but there's something I need to tell you. The piece of wood for the new keel is very special to me. And this is a, a soulful man. He is, he is not a man of a lot of words, but when they start, stand by. Uh, there was a terrible house fire in Newcastle in 2016. And I'm sure you all are familiar. Uh, 152 Portsmouth Avenue it was the Tarbell House, and it burned to the ground. And the day after it burned, uh, Julia Tarbell, so Edmund, who just died, Edmund's daughter, was friendly with Nate, but wouldn't vote for her. And she said, we've had this terrible tragedy, but some of this wood is still usable. Bring your trailer, bring your chainsaw. So he came over and harvested, so to speak, the main beam from one of the living rooms and hung on to it since 2016, sort of waiting for the good project, waiting for the right moment. And you all remember, remember here for many years, Edmund and his longtime partner in crime, Tinker Newick. Tinker taught me to row, uh, just for the record. Uh, and we're talking about 50 something, 52 years ago. So Tinker was my sailing instructor. Um, I am so pleased. So Edmund died last May, uh, 96 years old, but I was able to tell Edmund the story. So he was overjoyed. You know, he obviously didn't know that there was a wooden boat over the piece of the building still lying around. Um, there's the building. Uh, notice this window on the right. This is where the timber came from, this living room. And this is an Edmund Tarbell from 1914. I, I am overjoyed by this. So Julia sent me this. Uh, image. And she sent it to me this week, knowing I'd be here with you. So she wanted me to be sure to pass this along. So it's, it's again, incredible, this thread, Wood Island, I mean, holy smoke. Yeah, we're restoring the boat, but holy smoke, we got a connection to, yeah, this is just very, very special. Um, here's the boat, taking it apart. Ooh, that looks better. Taking it apart. Ooh, that looks better. And the crazy cradle, uh, 1922 plans. Again, research, we found the original plans. Put this whole thing together. Our good friends at Pan Am built it, donated it for us. It, 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 you have to have the right wheels. So we're talking, we're bragging about 1896 train track. You better have the wheels that fit that 1896 train track. So they had all that. Remember, that's how it launched. That's what we're looking at is a boat. And these are historic pictures. These don't exist. I mean, we're making this stuff up. So there's this beautiful surf boat on a funny little cradle. So the only way you know is that picture until you find the plans. So September 30th, the whole thing comes together. It was rather terrifying, but we launched the Mervyn Roberts. I'm pleased to report it floated. Uh, we rode it, which was also quite something. Um, we got that boat cradle out there. We put the boat on the cradle and we pulled it all up into the building. So it was um, it just a huge, huge day. So, all of this leading up to uh, let's have a fun event. And a, a historic boat hook was donated. Uh, it's a 200 year old item. It came from the lighthouse at Isles of Shoals. So it's a Coast Guard group, the little Coast Guard lighthouse. And the Coast Guard loves our project. I'm bragging about the Army National Guard. Coast Guard, I can tell you many stories. But the, the Coast Guard got in touch and said, um, Is there anything that we can do for you? You know, this is extraordinary what you guys are up to. I said, what we need is a chaplain. You know, bring us, bring us someone who can say a prayer. 
Here is Chaplin. The man's name is Chaplin Grace. I mean, you can't make your stand up. And look at this guy. And he's holding, could he look any more like a minister coming down the aisle? So this is my house in Kittery Point. The oarsmen have gathered. We're walking to town hall, sorry, to town dock. That is the Mervyn Roberts looking mighty fine, ready to launch. Gee whiz, I hope it floats. And it did. And I'm a, I'm having a big day. There's there's no need for coffee. I'm having a big day now. And Gundalo's following, big parade of boats. Um, you know the song on the cover of Main Boats, Homes and Harbors. No, you don't know that one. Okay. And um, great publicity, really, really good stuff. And there's a big parade of boats. Uh, the Mervyn Roberts is about to reach the Marine Railway. It's an exciting moment. This is special. That is a bagpiper uh, playing the Coast Guard song, which of course I didn't even know there was such a thing existed. Uh, obviously, the oarsman carrying the oars. That is the boat that trade kids go. So it had never been that far out to sea either. So really big stuff happened. Look at that. It seems to work. And it comes up the hill just fine. And there's, there's your money shot. Yeah, so that's really neat. So what we're talking about is restoring Wood Island, but it is operational. So there are definitely no other life-saving stations that are operational in the U.S. This is very, very crazy stuff. I only cried twice, uh, as he said, the most beautiful prayer. Um, this is the previous owner of the Mervyn Roberts. Um, the family of Mervyn brought a old milk bottle with water from the Connecticut River. So the boat was down in Mystic area for about 30 years. So they all came up. We had 40 or 50 of his family and friends. And we had 150 people on the island. It was an amazing day. But he's pouring water. Life is good. Um, this is uh, John Mauger, who is the Admiral for the Coast Guard for the quote-unquote first district. So that is New Jersey to Canada. And you know you're doing something right when uh, Coast Guard staff people called up and said, would it be okay if the Admiral rode your boat? <laughs> well, of course. No problem. Got a seat for the Admiral. Come to find out the Admiral doesn't know how to go. <laughs> so little, little diplomacy issue but we worked that out we explained uh admiral anyway so nice 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 man um that's mervin uh we he was 98 years old uh when that picture was taken and all these pieces came together so nicely again a thread connecting all these families um he invited us to lunch we had a wonderful meal and uh he donated that print to the new museum so really, really, really wonderful stuff. He died about 60 days after this picture. And he called me the week he died and said, um, how's it coming? You know, what's going on? I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, and it was, it was late December. And he said, well, is the Marine Railway done? Is the boat done? I said, Mervyn, we just got it like six weeks ago. You know, it's winter. We're not working. He said, well, you better hurry up. So anyway, wonderful, wonderful guy. Great, great, great sense of humor, too. Um, that is not an American flag. You all know this. That is a national ensign. That's what they call it. Because of it. So pretty cool. Before, during, after. Look at the ceiling. Woof, woof. That's fantastic. So it's in there right this minute. I was there yesterday. It looks spectacular. And we haven't played with it yet. So we restored this whole thing. Took two years. Put it in the water. Wrote it out there. Put it away. It was September 30th. There's no time to play with your toy. So we have not yet really checked it out. And the Coast Guard, let it be known, quiet back channel, when you put this back in the water, please call us so we can be with you on your sea toss. And we just, we just want to escort you and, and do the right things. So again, we're wrapping it up. Life-saving service, Coast Guard, Navy, let's get this Maritime Museum going. Um, again, research. We have, uh, believe it or not, records of every man who ever served there by year by rank. And that is really wild. So when Charles Hand shows up and George Ben Ricker show up, they're there. Boom, 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 boom. boom. So we, we, these families appear. Um, the um, uh, where's Tara and JD? Raise your hand high. There they are. Um, you'll get a kick out of this. Um, the flooring man came in yesterday. His great grandfather served at Wilhelm. I'm like, come on. I mean, I knew, I knew you'd laugh. I'm like, Tara's not going to believe this. Um, and I should recognize also Ellen Gardy. Can you please stand uh, just to say hi? Ellen is a board member of Wood Island. That's a little hand from Ellen. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, really, really, really wonderful. And I don't think there are any other board members, but uh, Dudley Dudley's pretty close, but we'll get there in a minute. I'm going to say some nice things about you too. Um, the, the, the database we have of all the recs. So uh, this is a great project. If anybody, uh, JD, if anybody wants to help out, um, again, newspapers.com, this is how we did all of this. What the dates, what the vessels that got in trouble, um, you know, what the crew was, what the cargo was, all the details. So each one of these, you know, is an incredible story and live saved. Um, people always ask, how do we get there? And I've been quickly mentioning Gundalo, Heritage, Utopia, Shining Star. Um, any boats welcome. So we have just touched on that before. It's the island is a public park. We're going to charge for people to use the dock and the museum, see the museum, but you can you can pull up. So we started with the vision. Uh, the vision was Gundala Island Heritage. Well, there's Gundala right there. Mm -hmm. And that is Maine Island Trails Association Board, a wonderful organization, really nice. Um, they're having fun. That is called Shining Star. It's a brand new boat, it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's Heritage. So, you know, the vision has come to pass. Mm -hmm. Um, we've raised and spent about 5.4, maybe a little more. Uh, a that also includes the donated value of the National Guard's labor. So it's not all cash, but it's pretty close. We're thinking yeah, 5.9, 6, something like that. So half a million to go, give or take. I've been saying half a million to go for about five years, but I think I'm really serious this time. Um, no funding from Kittery. That was our agreement. We're, we're going to take care of it. Thank you, but no thank you. Please just stay out of it. Um, you have not been good stewards. This is madness. This is a uh, promotion ceremony happening on the beach. Uh, a specialist became a sergeant. He's reading the orders. Big general came down. Uh, you know, amazing. Um, these are just some lovely, lovely images. Wood Island is an absolutely magical place. It is uh, something I'd very much like to take everybody here to go see. How many people here um, came out with the Athenaeum trip this past summer? Like not many, one, two, three, four, five, not many. Um, and I think we had what, 50? I mean, we had a lot of 45, we had a lot of people. So um, let's do that again. Should we do that again? Does everybody want to come? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's a blast. Um, pardon? It was sold out. Well, let's sold out, let's just do it more then. Yeah, and um, will you, um, Suki, will you bring some, you know, Chardonnay and, and shrimp? And some gin, very good, okay, excellent. We got a, we got a plan. Um, okay, put it on your schedule. We'll figure it out. Um, good stuff for free. Uh, there's a weather station on our webpage, Winsbury Direction. If you're a sailor or a boater, it's really great to look at. The lobstermen love it. Um, we also, as I mentioned, have live streaming video. Really cool to watch storms. That's the view from the watchtower. And that is the watchtower. Yeah, very special. I mentioned Charles Ham, the man that was married by my great great grandfather. Um, a great grandson of his showed up, not John Connors, a different one, who's on the board of Strawberry Bank, uh, and he made these benches by hand for us. Wow. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing. Um, we have a constant contact database someplace around here, right here. Uh, we have a little clipboard if anybody wants to pass that one around. The way we stay in touch is emails, um, and so that's worth doing. Um, little updates, invitations. Um, we have a nice Instagram too. A couple more wonderful pictures. I've mentioned historically significant. No other life saving stations with a marine railway like this. Nobody with a surf boat like that. Getting ready to open. Remember the one big message brave men rowing out to save others. And we are really currently trying to do that as well, helping others along the way. Uh, this is pretty fun. I did not know this picture was taken. I saw it a few days after the fact, Facebook, I tracked down the photographer. It's a wonderful, wonderful image. I was there with a friend of mine having a little adult beverage right there. <laughs> so really cool. But look at the seagull. I mean, that's an amazing photo. Um, there's the rec ball. Really, really neat. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. These photographers just send us these pictures. Um, this is where I say nice things about Dudley Dudley. So, um, you know, Portsmouth Historical has their uh, gingerbread cost, uh, 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 competition. So, like, for goodness sake, this thing has lights in it. Um, I promise you, I have nothing to do with this. This is Dudley Dudley and her beautiful daughter taking care of this. And of course, they won. 
you know, that's it. That's a given. You know you're on the right track uh, when Dudley Dudley is pulling the oar. That is that is a very good sign. Um, and we started with this. We're going to end with it. And uh, you now know a lot more about that funny little island. This is a bird's eye view. You see that thing right there? That is the float. So we had a second cradle with historic train wheels and all of that built for the float. So the boat is right now in the building on its cradle. Train tracks go in there. And that thing is on its other cradle, having come up and been stored for winter. Looks like that. Pretty cool. Boys and Nicholas, for sure. Um, there you go. I mean, that is a rainbow over Wood Island. Come on. Um, if you need me to explain this joke, you can meet with me afterwards. Um, but it's it's a metaphor of a lot of people said this couldn't be done. And I, you know, so it's it's a, a massive group effort. We have an amazing board uh, at Wood Island. We have a lot of supporters. I think we have 2,200 people or something on that database. And I'll tell you what, it it, it uh, gets uh, Kittery Town Council's attention when necessary. So so please join the fun.